In this exercise we will study a system consisting of an interferometer with two arms indexed 1 and 2 coupled to a detector which is represented here as a barrier with transmission amplitude T and reflection amplitude R. We can build a wave function describing this whole system which depends on a variable x describing the state of an electron in the interfer interferometer and a variable eta describing the state of an electron passing through or being reflected at the detector. So we build the wave function with the following sum of products. We have a wave function describing an electron in arm number one with some probability amplitude A1 and this multiplies the superposition of the wave function describing an electron reflected at the detector times the reflection amplitude plus a transmitted electron times the transmission amplitude which is in here indexed with 1 because the reflection amplitude and then transmission amplitude at the detector depends on in which arm the electron in the interferometer is. This is the principle of the detector. And the second term is the analogon for the electron being in arm number two. So in order to study the influence on one subsystem on the other, we are going to look at the reduced probability density for either system. So first I am going to write down the probability density for the whole system. So it is obtained by multiplying out all the terms here and I am going to write only one of them which will be one fourth of the whole expression. So here it is. This is the first summand of the probability density for the whole system. So first the first question regards the reduction of interference seen in the interferometer as a result of the presence of the detector. So in order to study this, we want to integrate out the detector variable eta in order to have a reduced density uh, use probability density for the interferometer alone. So here we integrate out the detector, which means concretely that we looked at the integral with respect to eta of the probability density and when computing this we have to remember that the <coughs> two functions xr and xt form an orthonormal basis so that the integral of a product with same index is 1 and the integral of a product with mixed indices is zero. <coughs> so, for example, from this term here, <coughs> you obtain a1 squared times c1 uh, phi1 times phi1 conjugate times R1 R1 conjugate 
plus T1, T1 conjugate, plus 0, plus 0. And since the sum of the square of the probability amplitude for reflection and transmission is 1, we simply have A1 squared times phi 1 of x squared. So the other terms that one obtains are A2 square times psi 2 of x square and then one has a term A1 A2 complex conjugate psi 1 of x psi 2 of x conjugate times r1 r2 plus t1 t2 plus the complex conjugate of this term. Now we see that we recover the classical transmission amplitudes through each arm of the ring plus an interference term. And this interference term, A1, A2 conjugate plus complex conjugate, is reduced by the following factor here. And now for the case where the detector is not able to detect the electron passing through the interferometer, which means that R1 is equal to R2, it is not, not sensitive on where the electron is. In that case, and also then T1 equal T2, in that case here we have simply R1 squared plus T1 squared, which is 1. And so the interference is not reduced. We have the full A1 times A2 con uh, conjugate plus complex conjugate, conjugate term. Just as when one considers an interferometer without any detector. Now, if the detector is maximally sensitive in that, for example, R1 is 0 and R2 is 1. So the electron is transmitted with probability 1 if in the interferometer the electron is in uh, arm 1 and in, if in the interferometer the electron is in arm number 2 then reflection at the detector is certain. Then in that case in this expression we always have one of the of either R1 or R2 is 0 or either T1 or T2 is 0 so that the whole term is always 0 and we have fully sup suppressed interference. So the second question in this exercise is what do we obtain if instead of integrating out the detector we integrate out the interferometer and look at the effective probability density for the interferometer. So that's the second step integrate out the interferometer and the principle is the same we integrate but now this time with respect to the interferometer uh, variable x and 
and here again we have to pay attention to the fact that phi1 and phi2 are orthogonal. So that for example here in this term phi1 times phi1 complex conjugate integrates out to 1 and any terms with mixed indices will yield 0. So here if we write out the full expression and integrate it we are going to end up with the following. So here is the full result that we get if we carry out the integration and we recognize essentially three terms. So the first one has a prefactor multiplying the square of the wave function describing a reflected electron so that we can interpret this as the reflection probability. And so in the next term we have a transmission probability and the third one will be an inter interference term which will be essentially sensitive to the difference in phase um, between reflection and transmission for either case where the electron in the interferometer passes through ring uh, through the arm number one or the arm number two and to see this interference term in an experiment we have to design a sample in which um, the interference pattern is sensitive to this difference in phase between the reflection and transmission and one possibility is to make an electronic Macht sender interferometer such as the one described in the last section of the chapter about the quantum Hall effect in the book used in the lecture where we use two point contacts where the first point contact corresponds to the first beam splitter in the Macht sender experiment where the edge channel is partially transmitted and partially reflected after which the two separate edge channels follow different paths and are recombined at a second point contact.